Blog number four. Backing tracks is cheating. I've never been afraid of admitting my own contradictions. You might grow up with specific held beliefs and then from certain circumstances you're forced to confront the nuances of issues. Rather than doubling down in fear of being a hypocrite, it's a great time to reevaluate your thoughts and come away with a better understanding of the subject and potentially change your mind. I used to absolutely loathe backing tracks as a fan of live music. I don't want to see a pre-planned choreography and perfection of a pop act. I want to see their, a band pour their heart and soul out there on stage with no faking. I want a visceral experience with the feedback and mistakes, the warts and all. Live bands could be a mass ensemble, but even with a drummer and guitarist two-piece, I prefer the authenticity of them playing live together without the use of backing tracks to fill in those empty spaces. I remember seeing a one-man band at Bloodstock years ago on the Jaeger stage. I was impressed by the technicality in the music, but my overall takeaway impression at the time was that the man really needed a backing band. You lose so much sonic presence without the power of real percussion or multiple amps blaring at you, as well as the natural stage presence of having a gang performing together. This isn't a criticism of the act's stellar music, but of the medium of playing on your own with backing tracks, an insecurity that persisted when I shifted to playing solo. But this isn't something new. For those who have followed Matt Spanner's journey from the start, Shout out, you guys. You'll remember it began as a transition from the sketch comedy series Boredom Killers and was the original band name that a chunk of songs from Life Absurd was written as. I ran out of sketch ideas as a comedy duo and I was finding more inspiration communicating humour through music. After years prior of searching for musicians, we had to settle and to perform as a two-piece with the backing track of a drum machine. And I hated it. Forced to use a shitty drum machine was written as a self-deprecating jab when it was obvious there were no local drummers to be found, and it's likely I'll play that old chestnut for a while longer. Since the three-piece band that Mad Span has been known as dissolved and I've moved from Shrewsbury back home to Aberystwyth between lockdowns, it feels like being at square one again. The search for other musicians who can play or want to play a niche experimental blend of crossover thrash grind punk didn't really yield any interest, so the only options at that point were to uproot and move to a city where I might be able to find some skilled players, or, or get comfortable being a one-man band and perform with backing tracks. In order to choose the latter, I had to reevaluate my position. Instead of judging what's what, <clears throat> instead of judging what a solo act lacks compared to a band, it's probably better to look at the benefits of playing with a backing track. There's so much more space on the stage to move around in. I love music, but my passion above all has always been stage performance. Hell, Antonin Artaud's theatre and its double is just as influential to my approach to Mad Spanner as Megadeth, so I reframed Mad Spanner as less of a live act and more of a form of theatre. Instead of that pop act choreography, I think of spaces for planned spontaneity, depending on the specific crowd and venue. The music in the background might be pre-recorded, but the frenzied movements need room to be fresh so that the authenticity of the live performance can be upheld. If I'm already trying my best to avoid genre in order to fit in, I may as well lean entirely into the art of stage performance to help differentiate my approach from other bands, which for them would primarily be about the music first and foremost. I'm always going to lack the sonic presence or the many-legged group presence of a live band, but hopefully I could do enough my own way to limit the comparisons as we're approaching the stage differently. Music isn't really the objective, it's the catharsis through frenzied chaos. Is the use of backing tracks cheating? Well, it depends on the intention. Godflesh is the only example I can think of where the backing tracks sound better than the live equivalent. It's nearly always better never having to rely on it. But if it comes to a place of necessity, then it certainly beats waiting around until a band is fully formed. There's so much to gain from collaboration and the camaraderie of a band, but what if only one person is heavily invested from writing all the material? Where's the separation of a band and a solo project? Lemmy, Mustaine, Ashan, Devin Townsend, even if they're the sole visionaries of writing the music, they still have to collaborate with other musicians from time to time to everyone's benefit. There are many solo acts out there that are making truly amazing music on their own, but never play live because either they live remotely or their ego is so insufferable it's hard to work with. Who wants to be dictated to in what and how they play in order to realise one dickhead's vision? Playing as a band requires collaboration and compromise, but as I live remotely and have a foaming salivation for playing live, the use of backing tracks is necessary. It doesn't feel like cheating as much as playing with a handicap, and with that I've made peace of using backing tracks for the time being. Moving to a city and finding musicians to collaborate with seems inevitable long term, but I want to do as much as I can to promote and represent alternative music here in Wales. 
There's lovely scenery here where I live, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. I walked past a lamb last month on the other side of a fence. It was abandoned, scrawny and shivering. I crouched and studied the lamb vicariously, saying hi to passers-by as if this is something I'd normally do. Another lamb, a healthy one, approached the shivering one and gave it a curious sniff. It then turned around and proceeded to defecate over the coward head of the other lamb, who was completely unfazed of the shit happening. The healthy lamb left and skipped over to its mother, and I got up and left the lamb to its own survival. What I'm really saying is, I don't have a point here.